In this recording, we're going to have a look at creating a curved roof, and then we are going to add a skylight into that roof. So I'm going to flick across to a side elevation of the building. And now I am going to select roof by extrusion. It now asks me to pick a plane. So I click OK and point at the wall that I'm looking at and click it. Then it asks me which level of the building I want the roof to be on. So I'm going to pick my roof level, click OK. I'm then going to check the construction of my roof by looking in the type selector. Maybe there's a pre-made roof construction in there that you're happy with, or maybe you have to select one, edit the type, duplicate it, and then edit the construction to suit your own roof construction. But I am going to stick with this one that's already here. Then I wish to draw the profile of the roof. I'm going to use the start end radius arc. There's the start of the arc, the end of the arc, and then I move the cursor to the center and go up and down there. And I can select which radius I wish to put it at. Then I'll do another one. And then I'll do one over here. And then I'll come down here and just do a short roof section over there as well. And then I'll nip across to the other side of the building and put a little overhang for the roof on this side to finish it off. OK, so that's the construction. That's the profile. Press the big green tick. Look back at it in 3D. We can see the roof across here. I'm going to use these blue arrows either side of the roof to just give it a little bit of an overhang on each side of the building. We may notice that the walls currently do not fill the void. I'm going to move the cursor to the edge of the wall press the tab key on the keyboard and then click the mouse. So I've now selected all of the external walls. With the attach top command, I can click on that and point the roof and click. And now all of the walls attach themselves to the roof. There we go. What I wish to do now is go to the south elevation on my one, where I look at this wall and the roof straight on. Zoom out a bit, reposition, click on the existing roof, and I'm going to use the copy command. Click and move across directly horizontal and click. Doesn't matter exactly how far. Press escape. Use the little blue arrow over here to resize the roof we've just created, and I'll just shrink it right down. Then I'm going to change the construction of that new roof to sloped glazing. So click on that. And we've now changed it to a glass roof. Your roof may not have the mullions in it straight away. Don't worry about that. We'll come to that in a minute anyway. Now we want to go back to our original roof and we want to highlight it and then use this command here, vertical opening. Click on it, asks us to pick a floor level. I'm going to say the third floor and open view. I can now see the perimeter of my roof in dashed lines. I can also see the layout of the third floor. I'm going to use these draw commands now to draw a three meter by nine meter opening 
There we go. And press the grid, gr big green tick. So let's have a look at that in 3D. We can see there we have a hole in the roof. Now it's rather an awkward position, that hole, but that's fine. We can deal with that. Maybe you want to move the hole down so it's just on the one sloping section. That would be easy enough to do. We could again just click on it, click on vertical opening again, and go back to our floor plan. And then we could just move those down out of the way or to another part of the building. But I'm going to leave it where it is and just carry on with it from this position. What I want to do now is go back to my south elevation. Click on the glass roof, use the move command to click and just slide it across again, making sure I stay horizontal. Zoom in, use the blue arrows either side of our glass roof to line up with the sides of the opening. There we go. Now, if I go back to 3D, we can see that we've got it there, but the whole roof is still got that full glazed bit going across and it overlaps with that other roof. So now I've got the glazed roof highlighted. I'm going to click Edit Profile and it brings up the profile in pink lines. What I'm going to do is delete the pink lines that are unnecessary. So I can go over the side of the building and click on those and just delete them. Now these two are required. So I click on those and I use the blue line and slide it up until it locks onto the edge of the opening. Likewise, I'll do the same on this one and slide that one round until it meets the edge of the opening there. And then I can press the big green tick. We usually get some little error messages here, but that's fine. We can just press delete on those elements and instances, and it'll get rid of any leftover bits of the millions that we don't want anymore. Now, this is where, if you haven't got any millions at all, we would click edit type and you might duplicate and name this type of roof light. And then you can change your layout to perhaps fixed numbers on your grids and give it your mullion types. Once you've done that, you click OK. Then in the properties, you can decide how many horizontal and vertical millions you want in your grid. My horizontal ones, I'm going to reduce that from four down to two and see what that comes up like. There we go. So it's now split. It's give me a million at that junction, which is good. And then it split the remainders into two sections. So to be honest, I could probably in that case, drop it down another one and apply it again. And that looks OK to me. What I'm going to do, though, because this is nine metres long at the moment, is five panes of glass. Um, I might reduce the sizes of those panes of glass and just bump that up a few and have a look. And that looks much better. So there is my roof with a skylight.